definitely did not have a very good reading month this week. Or this, this week. Star-wise, I mean, I read 11 books, so, like, that's good. But I read a lot of 1 to 2.5 star books, so hopefully next month will be better. We'll see. Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with my February wrap-up for 2017. I read a total of 11 books. It's currently February 25th, so I might finish another one, but I'll just include it into March wrap-up. So without further ado, let us get started! The first book that I read for February is Tricks by Ellen Hopkins, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows five deeply troubled teens who all live around the world, and different circumstances lead them to teenage prostitution. I love Ellen Hopkins, and I love her writing style. I find it so easy to read, and I always pick up her books if I haven't read them yet. Even though each character's point of view in this book are very short, you instantly become connected to every single one of them. The subject matter is definitely hard to handle at times. People should go with caution into this book if they're triggered by rape. There's a lot of it in this book, so... Keep that in mind, but I love how Ellen Hopkins deals with such difficult topics in a way that isn't like preachy and like in your face. So overall, I think it's a super important read and I enjoyed it because Ellen Hopkins. The next book that I read was Shadow of a Girl by Shannon Greenland and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. If you guys want to see my full thoughts, I have a review up there if you want to check that out. But it was good. I enjoyed it. And I think West is a little angel baby unicorn and I love him and that's all I'm going to say. The next book that I read was... Where She Went by Gail Foreman. This is the second book in the If I Stay duology. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I don't think it really added anything to the story. It was enjoyable, but it wasn't really anything special. I liked Adam's perspective better than I liked Mia's perspective in the first book, except he was kind of like really egotistical and annoying at times. I still liked it, so... 3 out of 5 stars. Next book that I read is Break Your Heart by Rhonda Helms. I ended up giving this book a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It fell very short for me. I thought it was going to be really good and I just didn't like it that much. It follows a girl named Megan Porter and she's a math major. She's about to graduate. She notices that one of her favorite classes has a new teacher, Dr. Nick Muramato, and she feels an instant connection to him and things develop into a relationship between them. And it's basically them trying to keep it hidden, you know, teacher-student relationship, all that fun stuff that shouldn't happen. I thought the book was entertaining but it's not something that's gonna stick with me for days after I've read it. It was just kind of like okay I read this book, cool, moving on. The one thing I did really enjoy about this book was that the cast was very diverse. There, Megan really bothered me. She contradicted herself constantly so it got to the point where I was just like rolling my eyes at her character because it was just, it was too much. Just too much contradiction. The fifth book that I read this month was Golden Boy by Abigail Tartalin. It's not Tortellini, I always call it Tortellini, it's Tartellini. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It was definitely my favorite that I read this month. It follows 16 year old Max, who is an intersex teenager. One night when his parents are throwing a party, Max's very old friend comes into his room and rapes him. Max believes that it's his fault and it's basically him trying to come to terms and coping with the rape that happened to him. This book was absolutely heartbreaking. It rips your heart out, stomps on it, puts it back together, stomps on it again, and it's just, it's such an important read. I loved it. I loved the changing points of views. Daniel, his nine-year-old brother, was definitely my favorite character. He was so adorable, and like, I know the point of his character is not to be adorable, but I just loved him so much. I think that everybody should read this book. It's so good and important, so if you haven't read this book, please read it. The next two books are part of the same series, and it is... Kisses and Lies and Kiss in the Dark by Lauren Henderson. This is part of the Scarlet Wakefield series. I think there's four books. I read the first book last month and I hated it. So I don't know why I continued the series, probably just because I have the books on my shelves and I'm like, I spent money on them, I should probably read them. This is the second book. I gave it a 1.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. The first book I gave a 1 star, so we're moving up in the rankings. Still find Scarlet to be super annoying. Most of the controversial things I found in the first book was eliminated or at least toned down in this book. So, so it's getting better at least. Then Kiss in the Dark is the third book in that series and I gave this one a 2 out of 5 stars. So we're getting better still. Have not read the fourth book. Don't know if it's going to happen. But Scarlet is far less annoying in this book, so that is a good point. The eighth book that I read this month was Folly by Marth Jocelyn. This book is set in Victorian London, 
and it's told from four different perspectives. 14-year-old Mary Finn is the main perspective, and she is sent away by her new stepmother to work as a nanny in a different area. At the age of 16, Mary falls for a boy named Caden Tucker, and the other main perspective in this book is James Nelligan. He's a six-year-old orphan who is being sent to the Fondling House after being a foster child for six years of his life. I found it very obvious how James and Mary's stories were going to intertwine. I did love James as a perspective though. I thought he was so cute and funny and witty. For a six-year-old, he just was, he was great. I did like Mary as well. I think she was very headstrong and honest and knew what she wanted. The other two points of view, Oliver and Eliza, I didn't really see a point of why they were included as perspectives. They were just kind of thrown in there for no reason in my opinion. I did find the pacing to be a little bit slow, so I found myself bored most of the time, so I only ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. On Goodreads. The ninth book that I read for the month of February is The Interrogation of Gabriel James. This book is by Charlie Price and I ended up giving it a 1.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows Gabriel James who is a witness to a double murder. There has been a lot of hate crimes and vandalism and drug sales in his neighborhood. After the funeral of one of the victims, Gabriel decides to head to the police station and tell them what he knows of the night of the murders. Although the book was very fast paced, I found the plot line to be very slow and boring and nothing really happened. In flashbacks and also like present time when Gabriel was being interrogated by the two police officers, and it just took a really long time for anything actually interesting to occur. I didn't really find myself connecting with any of the characters, and I just didn't really care what was going to happen next, so... Only gave it a 1.5 out of 5. Sorry. The next book that I read was A Plague Year by Edward Bloor. And I just want to say that I'm obsessed with this cover. I think it's so pretty. Even though, like, drugs are bad, I still think it's pretty. I gave this book a 2.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. A plague takes over the small town of Blackwater, Pennsylvania in the form of methamphetamine. 15-year-old Tom and his community are in the middle of it, and it's basically them creating this little drug-free group in order to talk about drugs and how people should not do it. This group talking on a weekly basis about the drug and what they should do to prevent the spread of it, which is not doing anything basically. I think that at times this book came across very pretentious and it got very annoying very quickly. Some of the characters were basically just put in the book just to show that meth is bad. And I mean like I'm pretty sure everybody knows meth is not good and you probably should not start taking meth, so... It just got to the point where I was rolling my eyes. Obviously, I agree, nobody should take the drug, but there was no solution put forth by this little group of individuals talking about drugs, so it kind of was just a circle going round and round, and it got very boring very quickly. Yeah, I like the overall message of the book, but I think that it fell short in the execution of it. The final book that I read for this February was Possessed by Kate Kahn. This book follows 16-year-old Rain, who is sick of living with her mother, her younger brother Jelly, and her abusive boyfriend Damien. She decides to take a job as a waitress at Morton's Keep, which is a few towns over, and this is basically her escape. Upon arriving, Rain begins to feel very uneasy as she learns the history of the keep and the things that happened to the people who were living there before her time. At times I found Rain to be very self-centered and annoying and I just couldn't deal with her character. I definitely like the secondary characters a lot more than Rain, but I still found most of them to be very boring and bland and they didn't really add anything interesting to the story. I did really enjoy the setting of the story though. I thought that the manor was super creepy. I only ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I just found it kind of boring, so... There you go. Alright guys, so that is my February wrap-up 11 books, which is pretty good, I think. I feel like I'm probably going to read a lot more in March because I have nothing to do except schoolwork. I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!